So you may have an investment property that maybe you bought within the last few years and the value has gone up significantly. Now you want to tap into that equity in order to build wealth, build more wealth in real estate than you already have. But can you get a home equity line of credit on a investment rental property? Or are all of those loan programs totally gone since the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates and credit has tightened substantially? Well, today I'm going to share with you the one bank that I found in my research that still does investment properties. Let's get to it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you didn't already know, my name is Jay Costa. I'm a real estate investor, agent, and builder here in northern New Jersey. If you get value after watching this video, please smash that like button down below and also consider subscribing. We are slowly building a tight knit community here of like minded individuals looking to build wealth in real estate. So if that interests you, hit that subscribe button, click that little notification bell. Also, if you're into discord, check out our new discord server. I'll put a link in the description box down below. And yeah, I will see you over there. But in this video, I'm going to go over investment property HELOCs. I'm going to share with you what an investment Investment property HELOC is, what the pros and the cons are, see if you can even get one still, and I'll also share with you the one lender that I have found that still offers them. So before getting started, if you have not watched any of my previous videos, I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, my HELOC playlist, I'll put a link in the, in the description as well as up here in the corner. But I want to share with you how HELOCs work first and foremost. So a home equity line of credit or a HELOC for short is a revolving credit line based on the equity that you have on your home or in your home. And it allows you to add a second lien to the property and the bank offers you a certain percentage. This is the LTV, loan to value, of your equity that you can pull out and pay off as you please. And you can basically use it on whatever you want. It's almost like a credit card. So that's a home equity line of credit. And most of the time, a home equity line of credit is used on a primary residence, like an owner occupied home, meaning the one you live in, like this home right here that I'm in right now that I live in. But what if you have an investment property that has a lot of equity that you want to tap into, but you don't want to do a cash out refinance and lose that all time super low juicy interest rate that you probably have? Well, as credit has tightened the last few years and interest rates have gone up substantially, there have been less and less lenders offering HELOCs on investment properties. And there's a few different reasons for that. We're going to get to that in a little bit. But first, I want to share why you would use a home equity line of credit on, a, on an investment property. Well, very simply put, you may have a lot of, or you probably do have a lot of equity in your rental property. Maybe you, maybe you put a lot of work into it with forced appreciation, or maybe the market has just gone up in your area and the value of it has gone up substantially and you want to use that money to go buy another investment property. And this is kind of always what we talk about on this channel in regards to using uh, home equity to fast track your real estate investing goals or journey. That way you can achieve your goals, achieve success, achieve financial freedom, whatever you're looking for on, on a faster pace than you would without access to this capital. So what are the pros and the cons of an investment property HELOC? Well, I'd like to start actually with the cons, because according to the HELOC lenders, there's a lot of cons to investment property HELOCs, hence why you can't really find any of them other than one, which we'll get to in a, in a second. You see, most HELOCs are based on a primary residence, an owner-occupied home. But since an investment property HELOC is based on a property that the borrower does not live in themselves, the HELOC lender sees this loan product as more risky, which makes sense, right? Because the more you think about it, the more you realize that if you don't live in a specific property, the chance or likelihood of you defaulting on that loan jump up significantly than if you were actually living in that home with your family. Therefore, regardless of how much equity you have, how good your credit score is, your income, your uh, debt to income, all these things, you're going to have to jump through more hoops with higher qualifications in order to get an investment property HELOC. So first, HELOCs on investment properties are more expensive than HELOCs on primary residence homes. Because of the fact that HELOC lenders see it as a more risky loan product, you they make you pay for it. So you're going to, generally speaking, have a higher interest rate to pay and higher fees to pay as well. It's also harder to find HELOC lenders that offer investment property HELOCs, which is 
presumably the reason why you're watching this video, but I will get to that a little later on. And it's also harder to qualify. They require a higher credit score, generally about 720 credit scores, what you, you usually need on an investment property HELOC compared to maybe only about 620 on a primary residence HELOC. You'll also need a lot of cash reserves, figure like six months or so of living expenses. You'll need a pretty low debt to income ratio around 40% and a low loan to value ratio on the property after getting the HELOC, generally less than 80%. For comparison's sake, a loan to value on a primary residence home, you can get up to 90, 95%. But like I said, investment property HELOCs, usually no more than 80%. That's max. And in regards to the debt to income, you're looking at 40% or less on an investment property HELOC. Generally speaking, it's about 50% on a primary residence HELOC. But don't let all the negatives that I'm throwing at you right now dissuade you from trying to get an investment property HELOC. Because just like any other real estate, the property value of your investment property goes up as well. And you're going to want to, if you're smart, use that equity in order to build wealth further in real estate. And this brings us to the pros of an investment property HELOC. And these are generally the same as pros for a regular HELOC. You could use the equity sitting in the uh, home, the investment property, and use it to go buy another investment property and fast track your real estate investing goals. It gives you access to so much more capital than you would have had without that HELOC. HELOC, potentially doubling the speed at which you reach your goals that you're looking to achieve. And also, just like any other HELOC, just because you have the HELOC in place doesn't mean you need to use it. So a HELOC with an investment property is similar in that regard to a HELOC on a primary residence because... You can get it, you can have it sitting there, but as long as the balance is zero, it doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to use it, and if you don't use it, it costs you nothing out of pocket for it to sit there. But it could just be sitting there for that perfect opportunity that you're waiting for and looking for to invest in. Maybe an opportunity that you need a lot of capital that you can pull very, very quickly and then pay off when you can in the future. So. This is probably the reason why you came to this video. Where can you still get a home equity line of credit on an investment property? Well, I've done a fair amount of research and all of the usual suspects of HELOC lenders that used to offer HELOCs on investment properties don't anymore. So the first one is PenFed Credit Union. I've discussed PenFed in previous videos. I don't have any personal experience myself, but it is by far the most commonly uh, suggested HELOC lender on the internet and on YouTube. And it has great reviews, and I would suggest them, or at least suggest looking into them, but I called them as of today, which is May 7th, 2024, and they said they still do not offer HELOCs on investment property, so they are out. Next would be Fifth Third Bank. Now, Fifth Third Bank, I know for sure, has offered HELOC um, investment property HELOCs in the past. I tried to call them many different ways and contact them. They were very hard to get on the phone, and once I got them on the phone, frankly, whoever I was talking to did not know the answer. So I tried to find the answer on their website, and I could not find anything about a HELOC on an investment property. So I'm going to assume here that Fifth Third Bank is out as well. Now, lastly, you have TD Bank. So TD Bank is all over the place. You've probably heard of them many times before. I went right on their website, and they still do, as of today, May 7th, 2024, offer investment property HELOCs. The rate that they're offering is prime rate plus 1.74%. So that means if the prime rate is 8.5% like it is right now, you're paying 10.24% interest rate on an investment property HELOC. Now, the website doesn't show anything in regards to LTV. I would assume it's about 75 to 80% that, um, you know, that they offer on the investment property. There is a small origination fee of $99 as well as an annual fee of $50. All things considered, I think those are pretty minimal with the fees. And frankly, you may want to look into TD Bank for your HELOC on an investment property. Full disclosure, I am not affiliated, getting paid in any way, shape or form from TD Bank. They've never heard of me at all. This is just the only major bank that I've seen that still offers investment property HELOCs. That being said, I always recommend that you reach out to your local credit unions. I can't search every local credit union in the area for you guys. Just Google your local credit unions in your town, in your city, and call them up and ask them if they do investment property HELOCs. I think some still do, and actually you may have better luck 
finding uh, investment property HELOCs through credit unions locally than you would for national and regional banks. That's just my guess, but drop a comment in the comment section down below and let me know your experiences looking for an investment property HELOC. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, you will love my other HELOC content as well as my real estate investing content. I'll put a link to the full custom playlists in the description box down below as well as up here in the corner. If you have any questions at all, you could drop a comment in the comment section down below as well as reach me on my Discord server or our Discord server. Link in the description as well. I appreciate you guys tuning in and I will see you next time.